Quincy, can you just kind of describe what groove you got in the second half? Because, you know, coming off the tough loss at Marquette and then in the first half, you were just one for five from the floor. So can you describe what, what groove you were in there in the final 20 minutes? I mean, what was the first shot I made? Was it a layup? Just, just, in, the it second, was the, in, the second in the second half, I can't remember. I, I just remember just at halftime, just praying and just telling God to just let me forget the first half and come out here and play the game the right way. Uh, Coach Coach Cohen just told me to make sure I bring good energy, and I, I looked back looked at him and said it starts with stops. So I just made just tried to psych myself out to focus on defense and just let the game come to me. Uh, the the pressure or the the nerves or f excitement of Cracking 2000 already happened, ironically, with the first shot. So that was out the way. But just asking God just to allow me to play with a clear mind and give everything I have to my team on the defensive end and let the offense take care of itself. What's 2,000 points mean to you? I know the win, you're going to say, means more. But given your journey from Rice to Xavier and just your basketball, how much it means to you overall, what's 2,000 mean to you? A lot. You know, I just touched 1,000 last December. And I tell people all the time, if I didn't break my wrist my junior year, if I didn't start the, my junior year with a sprained wrist, if we didn't catch COVID, I probably would be close to 3,000. And who knows what my career would be like, but my journey included me breaking my wrist because what I learned away from the game was way more valuable than what I learned playing the game. And I never scored 1,000 in high school, so I doubled it in college. And it's just an amazing feeling. It's, all glory goes to God, but just a huge thank you to Coach Para at Rice for sticking with me, uh, my mom, my dad, everybody who supported me because 2000 is that's a lot. Of, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot. Of, um, I was about to cuss. I'm sorry. That's a lot of points. Davion, you guys kind of got challenged this week by your coach in, in terms of your effort and the the expectation for how he wants you to play. What was the response in your mind? To why were you guys able to sort of unlock what he wanted you to unlock in this game? Um, you know, just starting with me, Q, um, Abu, and Dez, just trying to be leaders of the team. Um, it starts with us. So just coming out every, each game, uh, attacking every day at practice with, you know, the same mindset is we got to be leaders and we got to come out and we got to have effort. Um, I felt like us four, we started the game out with great effort and it just spread it on to the to whole team. This question goes to both of you guys. Uh, congrats on the victory. Um, as players who have both scored points on points on points in your college and high school careers, um, I have two questions. The first is, what does it take to be a, an elite scorer at the college level as opposed to younger levels of basketball, especially high school? What's the difference? And second, how many points do you think you would score in a high school basketball game if you played one today? Uh, I think I could get, <laughs> like where I'm from, Duh. where I'm from, uh, I, I think I'd get 60, where I'm Dang, from, I mean, where I'm from, I think I'd get 60, um, but what was the first question? Just what would you, uh, what does it take to be an elite scorer? Um, I feel like for me personally, it's just trusting my teammates, um, you know, not, not trying to force too much and just letting the game come to you. Um, you know, everybody's different, but for me, I just feel like, you know, attacking certain mismatches and just being in the groove um, is, is all it is for me. Uh, scoring, no matter the level, it just takes confidence. You know, I started at halftime, I was one for five, I believe, and then I scored 28 in the second half. So it's definitely just confidence, just knowing that the next shot is going in. And if I was to play now, <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably have a hundred. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, boy. It would be over with at halftime. <laughs> For sure. That's a funny question. Uh, either one of you guys, can you guys discuss, um, I know February for freshman years can be kind of the dog days for guys kind of getting tired for the first time, but tonight you guys got big games from Trey and Davion, and you had to lean a lot on Lazar. Can you guys just talk about what you guys saw from them kind of in, their, in the game like this and a much needed win? Um... I'm glad they play. I'm glad they play well. Um, that's just something that we need. Um, so you know, Trey, me personally, I, he's my he's my roommate on the road. So just 
always talking to him, encouraging him as much as I can. Um, Lazar, he's 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 came from he's came a long way. Um, so him just keep giving him confidence and keep allowing him to do his thing is is big for us. Yeah, most definitely, especially Lazar. You know, after just a tough little stretch he had. He came in the game with a lot of confidence. Um, he's been working his, his uh, tail off in practice, just getting better and having the right attitude. And he came in and contributed huge. Kachi, you know, he started first career start, and he just brought good energy on the offensive glass, you know, just crashing for us every time, playing hard. No matter, everybody knows, like, when Kachi makes a mistake, like, you know he's going a 1,000. Like, he's giving you everything he has, so you can't even – get mad that the mistake is because he's not trying. You know, like if I throw a bad pass, it's like, no, that's on me. Or if he crashes an offensive glass and the ball slips out of his hand, it's like, well, he's just going too hard. You know what I'm saying? Like slow your mind down. And then obviously Daylon and Trey just coming in and just uh, helping helping maintain the low, not dropping the lead or uh, sticking out, uh, bringing negative energy, you know, just maintaining and keeping it positive on the floor is, is big, especially going into March because everybody knows anything can happen in March. Q, if someone wanted to become a better shooter, what sort of advice? Next would you question, because not you. <laughs> if now maybe that was coming from Paul, now nah, I would say, uh, nah. But for real, for real, I would just say confidence, man. It's reps, man. My dad, boy, I can, I can't even tell you how many times we didn't just spent shooting in the gym, and just rebounding outside, and just making sure that. If I if I if something feels off, just staying after as long until it until it feels good and just having confidence and having somebody that that believes in you, you know. So if you need me to be my father for you in the gym and just give you confidence, then I can do that.